Hi, Gary Usry here, and the pictures you just saw were taken with the Nikon 85mm 1.8G. I'm going to do a review for this lens right now. So, this lens is freaking amazing. I love this lens. Uh, I picked it up, I think, just about a year ago. Maybe a little less, actually. I don't think I've had it quite a year yet. And I gotta say that this lens is definitely a fun lens. When I first got it, I used it mostly on, or actually primarily on my Nikon D7000, which was, as most people know, a crop format uh, sensor. And now that I can use it on my D600, it has basically become my prime go-to lens. I don't really use any other lens except for maybe my 50 mil. But yeah, so let's get on with the review. Uh, the build quality of this thing is pretty awesome. It's mostly what you would expect in this awesome, awesome price range of right around $500. I actually think there might even be a rebate dropping this down to $400 right now. Uh, it's mostly plastic. The lens hood is plastic. Uh, it's not really, like, the lens hood does not give you a very confident feel, but I've never had a lens hood break, honestly. Uh, body, mostly plastic, metal lens mount, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, metal lens mount, and around the lens mount is a little rubber gasket, you can actually uh, move it with your finger, and that's going to give you some minor weather sealing. Uh, I've used this in the pouring rain before with my Nikon D7000, not a problem. It's got seven rounded aperture blades. The uh, 1.4G has nine blades, but I have not really, I've, I've never used the 1.4G except for maybe playing around with it at the store. But I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference in your bokeh quality. Um, and I mean, like I said, it's what you would expect for costing a third of the price compared to its older brother, the 1.4G. The image quality though on this thing is, I don't know, it, it's what you would expect from Nikon. I don't know if you would uh, believe that the image quality is just as good as the 1.4G at a third of the price. The 1.4G, of course, being able to open up that, I believe it's a third of a stop faster, and it has uh, more metal construction Whereas this, like I said, is more plastic construction. But the image quality is outstanding. It's got great bokeh. Uh, I've not been able to get this to produce any major distortion with like chromatic aberration, vignetting, anything like that. Nothing, not been a problem there. And this has commonly been rated as being just as sharp as the 1.4G. Um, and I can, I can agree with that. This lens is freaking sharp. Uh, I had to dial in some autofocus fine tuning on my D7000 and a lot less on my D600. But once you get it dialed in or if you get that awesome perfect copy, it is going to be sharp. Don't worry about the sharpness on this thing. Just go out and have fun and shoot with it. Uh, right now I'm going to show you guys some sample pictures with the bokeh. I took and shot my Ice King. He is in the front. Behind him is Finn. And behind, behind Finn is the frog. So take a look at these right now. They range from f1.8 all the way to its highest aperture at f, I believe it was f16. Take a look at those now. So, as you can see, uh, f1.8 it really nicely blows out that background. Uh, it's nice, creamy, smooth. It's not jaggedy. It's not distracting or anything like that. It really blows it out. And as you bring it up, it, you know, of course, gets very sharp. 
It seems a little less sharp at F16 to me, honestly. But, like I said, it's an awesome lens. I don't think I bought it to shoot at F16. I think I bought it to shoot mostly around F1.8. Uh, some pros and cons with this lens. Uh, pros are that this is a very, it's a fairly small lens. Um, here's my 50 millimeter 1.8G and the 85. And I would say the 85 millimeter 1.8G is probably uh, eyeballing it probably a third bigger than the 1.5 G it is a bit bigger in diameter so this lens is a pretty small lens it goes in it goes in my camera bag just because it can I mean it's easy to fit in there it's a good telephoto length on or actually it's the low end of a telephoto length on my D600 and a pretty good telephoto length I can show you that right now. Uh, the first picture is taken on my D600 and the second picture on the D7000. I wanted to show you guys what the difference is for the crop factor. So there's those pictures right now. As you can see on the D7000, uh, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot more telephoto, of course. It's 50% uh, more zoom with the uh, crop format. So, it, but like I said, that's one of the good things. Is it's a good uh, telephoto to semi telephoto range. Uh, it's this is the magic portrait range a lot of people used to use and suggest, and I still use it. I still suggest it. Um, the build quality, even though it is mostly plastic, I've not found a problem with it. I kind of like the plastic because it's kind of harder to scratch up. Uh, the scratches, when you scratch, if you accidentally scratch it, I'm pretty gentle with my lenses, but if you ever do accidentally scratch it, there's just more black plastic underneath it. Whereas if you scratch a, uh, metal lens, you're going to get the silver, silver metal <laughs> showing through so I, I don't mind the plastic it's really light uh, it's got insane image quality love the image quality check out Flickr just type in 85 millimeter 1.8 G there's a couple groups on it you can the pictures that this thing takes amazing but I guess that's kinda wrong because it's the picture that the photographer takes right yeah anyways uh, of course, you know that if I do a video like this, I'm going to have to point out some cons with this lens because you're probably watching this video trying to decide, do you want to buy this thing or not? Some cons I have found with this are that if you handhold this thing and try to shoot at the 1.8 aperture, try to shoot it wide open, it can be very hard to nail, nail focus. You really have to get your shutter speed up pretty high to uh, stop your handshake and then you still might not nail the focus just because your depth of field is shallow and you can see with those pictures of Ice King the uh, I believe the sharpness was even falling off of his face so the depth of field is going to be very shallow at 1.8 it's going to be hard to get those eyes in focus and stuff like that without stopping down a little uh, the focus, I've, in some really bad lighting, hunts every now and then, where it'll do the uh, back and forth, back and forth, try to nail it, back and forth, back and forth, and that that is a pain in the ass, honestly, but it hasn't happened enough to where I need to find a solution outside of this lens. And the minimum focus distance on this is just over two and a half feet. And that's not too much of a problem, but I am the, if I'm going out to grab a bite to eat, grab my camera, and this is usually on it, and two and a half feet is, it, it, you know, you're in an intimate setting, and if I want to snap a picture of my fiance in the other side of the booth, sometimes I have to do the lean way back and try to get her in focus. And two and a half feet sometimes is just hard to work with getting her that far away. But for those complaints compared to the awesomeness that is this lens, I think I can live with it. I, I spent 500 bucks on this lens and I thought it was a steal. I think it's worth more than that, honestly. 
go out and buy this lens if you are even curious about it. If you don't know if you want the 85 millimeter uh, zoom air, or not zoom, but the air 85 millimeter field of view, take one of your lenses that might cover that 85 millimeter view, tape it at 85 millimeters, and walk around for the day and see what you come up with. 85 millimeters is a lovely portrait lens. This has been Gary Usry with my first review back after taking a very long hiatus. I hope you guys found this more useful than some of my older reviews. I hope I covered the points that you had. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. I will answer as fast as I can. Thanks for watching. Here's some more images that I have taken with this lens. Go out and get it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.